Hi, I'm Jed Seed. I'm a clinical psychologist and assistant professor in the psychology department at Swarthmore. And I want to talk to you today for a few minutes about reflective listening skills. Imagine you're having a disagreement with a loved one. You're trying to convey something that you'd like them to be able to hear. And they say back to you, oh, you're always exaggerating. I've never been that bad. But let's imagine as well that your emotions don't get the better of you. And you'd really just like your loved one to be able to see that there's a problem. How can you respond? If you're like many people, you're tempted to pull out the receipts. Yes, you have. Don't you remember when? Or even you told me that you realize. And what happens next? Probably your loved one gets defensive and explains, yeah, but that's different, or defends themselves and the disagreement polarizes. And the question is, what can be more effective? And the first thing I'd like to observe is that it's human nature that when somebody is ambivalent, ambivalent even when they really like two different competing things at the same time, if you push them toward one, psychologically they push back. If you push them away from one, psychologically they push back. You say, I really think you should do X. They want to do X, but X competes with Y and they want to do both of them and they haven't decided. You say, I really think you should do X. And immediately they think, yeah, but then what about Y? What's more effective? Well, reflective listening is a good start. And reflective listening can be fairly straightforward, but it can also be quite strategic. And I'd like to show you a couple of examples of that. The first type of reflection is what we call a simple reflection. And when you're offering a simple reflection, you're trying to get it right. You're trying to let the person know that you heard what they're saying, you understand how they're feeling. You don't necessarily endorse it or agree with it, but you hear it. And so a simple reflection to this loved one saying, oh, you're always exaggerating, I've never been that bad, might be saying, yeah, it seems to you that it's really never been as bad as I'm saying. Hopefully you get that right. That wouldn't be a bad option. But sometimes you can use your reflections a little more strategically to turn the conversation in different directions. Sometimes we use what we call understated reflections where we intentionally miss by understating what the person's probably trying to say. And the impact of that is that they tell us more about it. That's really effective, especially with emotional content. So if you might say in this case, oh, you're always exaggerating, I've never been that bad. And you say, well, your sense is that it's not quite the way I'm saying. They might say it's more than not quite the way I'm, you're saying. Oh, how so? And now they're telling you even more about their perspective. That might not be strategically what you'd like to do in this conversation, but there might be a place for that too. Amplified reflections, on the other hand, when you purposefully overstate, miss by exaggerating just a bit, can be helpful in getting the other person to reconsider. And so for example, if this person says, you're always exaggerating, I've never been that bad, and you say, yeah, it seems to you that I have no reason for concern at all, they might say, well, not no reason for concern. And you say, oh, how so? And now they're telling you what they see as potential reasons for concern, instead of you being stuck in a battle with them, trying to prove there, there is reason, there isn't reason. I hope everybody is doing well out there. Stay safe, healthy, and I look forward to seeing you when we can all get back together in person.